All right. Hey, welcome to another episode of Coach Pete's Perspective. Um, I am pumped. I not only have one, but two guests with us today. So I have Deb North, who is the founder, owner of Yes Athletics. We're going to talk about that a little bit. And then we have one of our sponsored athletes, who is one of our best wrestlers in the U.S., Lauren Louise, who is a multi-time college All-American. She's on her Olympic ladder, um, won seniors in 2020. So Deb, Lauren, thank you so much for being on. Thank you for having us. Yeah, you bet. So, well, Deb, let's start with you. You know, let's let's talk about Yes Athletics and where did this thought, this dream, the vision come from? My COVID baby. <laughs> That's what I call it. Um, so my daughter, she's now 12. When she was about nine, she wanted to try wrestling. And I thought, That's that's cool. We'll go check it out. And so um she the first year, you know, you you use the hand-me-down shoes. Um, the, usually every club, of course, has a bucket and use the hand-me-down shoes. But the next year she wanted to keep going. And so as we were looking, I mean, all we could find were black and white wrestling shoes. And I thought, girls want cute stuff. How does this not exist when this is one of the fastest growing sports in the United States right now? So I saw a need and started a company. Yeah, that's, I mean, it is, it's a true need. Uh, you know, so we've had girls wrestle for us on our boys team for years and, mm-hmm. we've had, you know, thinking back, we've had three girls that made it to boys state. They beat boys, made it there. I uh, had a girl that was the first unofficial state champion. Whenever we had unofficial girl state, she went on, she won Fargo and, you know, so great wrestlers, they wore boys wrestling shoes. They wore boys knee pads. Everything they had was mm-hmm. the boys at that time. And like you said, as wrestling has grown and grown and uh, here in Kansas, where I'm at, and you're also at Deb, you know, we've had girls wrestling now officially for three years, you know, you look at Texas, California, Hawaii, they've had it for a long time, but now almost every state in the U S so it is a major need and you're, and you're filling that role whenever That's you exciting. Yeah, it is. So whenever you, you know, develop a company and you got going with it, Tell me some of the struggles and then some of the successes, because anytime you're an entrepreneur, it's, it's a up and down, right? It's a roller coaster. Right. Um, you know, I've been pretty blessed. I think the big thing with, with business is you need to surround yourself with people who are smarter than you. I mean, I just, I spent a lot of late nights studying, reading my day job. I'm a headhunter. So I'm a recruiter and I, I find people jobs. So selling a product was something I had never done in my life. So um, just surrounding myself with you know, marketing people that knew what they were doing and um, e-commerce people and just reading and studying. And, um, you know, when I first got the idea, I found some samples, I got some samples put together and had a focus group of girls. Uh, Maddie Gray, who's um, obviously one of the top wrestlers in the U.S. right now, she was in my original focus group. So I just wanted to see you know, what their thoughts were on everything from aesthetics to colors to will these perform for you? Um, so that that was our first step. And we made some changes after that. And then we officially launched in October of 2020. Yeah, it's when you've been around wrestling for a while, the shoe game is big and yeah. it's not easy to break into it. You know, it is for one thing, I think people kind of follow trends like they would with, you know, regular tennis shoes or something like that. When Nike's hot or when Adidas is hot, I mean, people like to wear this type of thing. But like you said, it's got to perform well and it's got to look good. Look good, feel good, perform good. And, you know, wrestlers, I could number of my wrestlers over the years and some of the guys that still have on the team, they're shoe collectors, right? They collect, they trade. Um, I'm, you know, sometimes they're bringing in these shoes. I'm like, dang, I had those shoes in like 1994. Wish I'd have kept them. They're worth like 500. Right. <laughs> you know, and these kids. Yeah, like sneaker heads. There's like, I mean, people just exactly. they obsess over shoes. And exactly. I mean, we're girls, but we're known to like shoes. And I, I don't, you know, some people don't like the word cute, but my target market for my first shoe was age four to 14. And I mean, they want cute shoes. They don't, yeah. they don't necessarily, they want to, they want to, you know, they're just starting out in this sport and they still want to feel like a girl in this sport. So that was the goal was to have something, you know, aesthetically pleasing made for girls. Yeah. I can tell you, you know, this last season, we, well, I guess two seasons ago, but we got really cool singlets. Our singlets are awesome. Almost everywhere we go, people are like asking mm. our girls, our singlets in a warm up tops, like, Oh, those are awesome. What brand is that? And we want one of those. 
And uh, right. just the girls having their own thing, their own style, you know, they're not just like our boys team. They really, really value having their own gig, right? Having, I mean, everything that's theirs, it's not, hey, we're, we're second class to the boys in this sport just because right. we've only started wrestling. And in our program, I know a lot of programs out there, like we're, you know, we want both programs to be as good as possible and we want to provide as many opportunities as possible. So for you, you know, as you are allowing these opportunities for the girls to be able to do this, what are, you said initially your focus was kind of four to 14. Where's yeah. your focus right now? I know that, and uh, I know you're also a humble, but I'm going to brag on you. You know, you guys just became the official shoe of NAIA wrestling and anyone that knows girls wrestling and for those who don't, NAIA has more girls wrestling programs than any other division out there. It's yeah. what I would say was like the, the go-getter and the starter of women's wrestling in college. And so for you guys to make that, uh, that connection, that is huge. So what's your focus right now? Well, so that was our original shoe. And then we realized that um, I just needed a little bit more high performing shoe. So I have a second shoe. The, the first one's called the Defiant and the second one's called the Champion. I should have had samples here to show pictures, but um, they are white and gold or white and yellow. Um, so they're for the, you know, the girls in high school, college. Lauren has them. We sponsored Del Valle University this year. They have, um, they use those shoes. Del Valle has is yellow, so it worked out perfect. Um, we also sponsored Pittsburgh High School and they have the gold ones. So those are for the more, I guess, serious, the seasoned athlete. Um, they have a they're just, they're a little more sturdy. They have a better grip. Yeah. All right. And then I forgot you are originally from Pittsburgh. Is that right? Yes. Yep. Okay, yeah. All I was right. a purple S dragon. Yeah. The SEK down there. So mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends in that area. So I was uh, all American for Labette. I wrestled in the area. So no, no, all about it, but yeah. Okay. Now tell me, how did you make this connection with Lauren? You know, that's a great question. I think we just, so you just, the great thing about the world is there's so many good people out there and they want to help, especially if the wrestling community is just known for that, but people to say, Oh, you need to meet this person or you need to meet this person. Just, so just kind of snowballs and um, somehow we got connected. And then she was my date to the wrestle like a girl gala in the fall. And um, we've just stayed in touch and her values really align with what we're trying to accomplish. You know, just, I mean, yes, we are a for-profit. Yes. I want to make money, but I'm really passionate about, girls and they just inspire me how brave they've been to step into this world where traditionally it was a boy's sport um so i just it's a good it's a good fit absolutely so all right well lauren let's start with your background where'd you grow up and then how'd you get into wrestling um from maslin ohio and uh got into wrestling for a few different reasons. One, um, I was big on like running and track and stuff. And I was like, oh, I need a winter sport to keep me in shape. And <laughs> the combination of um, my little brother was wrestling in youth and he would come home and attack me on the couch and I needed to defend myself. <laughs> so it, it was the combination of I need to defend myself and I need a winter sport to stay in shape for track and uh, wrestling started wrestling and it was hard. It was the hardest sport I've ever done. And that's what drew me to it. And I was like, I love this. I love how hard it is. I'm successful um, in all the other sports that I do. And this one's not easy. What age were you? Uh, eighth grade. So 12 or 13. Okay. So start wrestling in the eighth grade at that time did they have girls wrestling in Ohio? Did your, did your school have it? No. So you're in there wrestling with the boys. Yeah. Yeah. I was the only girl on the team all through middle school, high school. Yeah. Until I got to college. Yeah. And that's, you know, that was the case previously. Right. So, you know, a lot of the girls, which it's, it's you gotta be extra brave to go in and do that. And then totally. you're so. trailblazer girl. You are a trailblazer. <laughs> yeah. This is a sport that no matter what, tell my athletes all the time, you know, when we talk about nerves and dealing with nerves, and like hey, I've wrestled over a thousand matches in my life and I was nervous for every single one of them. So whether you're wrestling, boys wrestling, girls wrestling, or a girl who had to wrestle against the boys, it's just a tough, difficult thing. It is, there's a lot of bravery involved, but like Deb just said, you're, you know, a trailblazer, you're a pioneer, got to go into that and do it. So 
Um, at what point did you decide I want to be a college wrestler and how did the process happen for you to go wrestle in college? Um, I was, so I was a senior in high school and my high school coach, I was looking at different colleges and actually I was, I got offers to run. I mean, I was a good, uh, runner and cross country and long distance track. And so I was getting different offers from different colleges for scholarship. And my high school coach goes, you know, you could wrestle in college. And I was like, I could do that. And he was like, yeah, there's programs for girls. And so I looked them up and sure enough, um, there was five programs at the time that offered wow. scholarship to women in the U S and now we're up to like 107, I think is the number. Um, but yeah, there was five, um, when I started and yeah, so I went to the university of the Cumberlands and wrestled for them. Yeah. then that's crazy just to think about how fast this has taken off. And again, I want to give a you know, huge shout out to, to NEIA schools, you know, for really like embracing wrestling, taking off with it. And now we have, you know, every division now has schools. And of course the big deal in the last year has been, you know, division one is these division one schools, Iowa, you know, starting wrestling, Arizona, (laughs) those type of things. But man, I don't want to like give, I don't want to, I don't want to like people just to focus on like, oh, these D1s are getting it. Hey, guess what? NEIA has just been kicking butt for years in this, in the (laughs) wrestling. Right. So because probably all the field, do all the Olympians on the team, I mean, the girls you practice with, I mean, are they all probably came out of NAI schools, right? Yes. Yeah. For the most part, I think King um, is a, it's a division two NCAA. Um, and that was, that was around. Um, but yeah, for the most part, NAI. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we all competed against each other in the WCWA women's college wrestling, which is still around, but I mean, you know, now they're having NAI national championships and, yeah, and NCAA, and so, but the the WCWA, as far as I know, still exists. So, yeah. Yeah, and I just heard the other day that JUCO is going to add a women's national as well, you know, as well. So their own separate nationals as well. So, which is awesome. Okay, yeah. so you know, you wrestle at the college level, do very well there, and then you have the opportunity to continue on. Tell us about this this journey. I mean, because people got to realize that there's no professional wrestling, right? I'm not talking WWE, but like when you get into <laughs> wrestling college, there's nothing else unless you are at the level where you can maybe make the Olympic team be on the ladder. And that's a very tough thing to do. It is, those aren't just good wrestlers. College wrestlers are, are kind of like the pros, like it's the elite of the elite. So tell yeah. me about that, a little bit about that process and that journey for you. Well, um, I, I knew that I wanted to compete in the Olympics since I was six. So I was like, I made, you know, I watched the Olympics on TV when I was six and I was like, I'm going to be there one day. I, I want to do that. And, uh, I just didn't know it was going to be in wrestling. <laughs> you know, I thought, I thought I was going to be a runner. Um, and then once I started going down the wrestling journey, I was like, man, like I, I love this sport. I love how hard it is. I love the, the things that it requires of you. It requires, it requires everything, you know? And, and I loved, um, what you had to give and the way you had to give it. Um, so yeah, so wrestling, uh, so yeah, I compete in college after college. Um, I knew I wanted to continue training. And so, you know, what's the best route to do that? You know, most people go coaching. So I coached at the same school that I I went to. So I coached, um, as a grad assistant for two years, got my master's degree and continued training and coaching. And, you know, it was, it was very, very difficult to, give to the athletes and, you know, and, and I'm young, right. I just graduated. So give to the athletes who were my former teammates, you know, what give them what they needed along with my training and competing myself. So did that and navigated that for two years until I got my master's degree. And then I was like, you know, I want to train and I want to do this the right way. And I want to do this full out. And I think I'm going to have to give up coaching just because I can't fully devote myself to them and to myself at the same time. So what better place to do that than the University of Iowa? <laughs> mm-hmm. So um, I went to Iowa and I, uh, I trained there for four years and I, I was the, the first female um, in the Hawkeye Wrestling Club in that, in that program there. Trained there for four years and, um, you know, it, it was tough. It was gritty. Practices were hard. They were grueling, long, you know, requires a lot of you. Um, and, and I took away some great stuff from that and what, you know, while I was there, I learned a lot of things. And, and then I was like, you know, I, I want to keep going down this path. And, uh, that's when I made the transition to the uh, Olympic training center. And I've been there and I'm still there. Um, and I've been there the last four years. 
what are your, what are your current goals, desired outcomes? Like what are the things that you're training for right now? To be a world champion, Olympic champion, 2024 Paris. That's the goal. Yeah. Okay. Now tell me a little bit about some of the, like, what's a day look like for you when it comes to training? And we talk to our athletes all the time, you know, Hey, we only have you a couple hours a day. And at the highest levels, it's lifestyle versus lifestyle, right? So the way you sleep, the way you eat, the way you train, all these things. So what's a day look like for you? You're exactly right. It's um, this sport requires all of you. So even when you're not training, you're training. Everything, everything is wrestling, you know, wrestling is everything. So even when I'm off the mat, um, so yeah, a day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm lifting in the afternoons. Um, every morning, you know, I'm, I'm on the mat or, you know, doing, doing workouts. Um, when I'm not on the mat, I'm doing, you know, PT recovery, cold plunge, sauna, um, taking care of my body, chiropractor, going into the sports med, you know, you know, you get banged up when you wrestle and you, you need to take care of those things right away. You know, I, in, in my younger, younger days, when I was a little bit more naive, I would ignore those things. You know, I'd be like, ah, I'm fine. You know, ah, I'm tough, Grr, ah, you know, and, uh, but as I get older, you know, I learned like, Hey, the quicker you address these things, the quicker you get them taken care of, the less of a problem they are, the less of an issue they are. You don't have to battle through those at practice. They don't turn into something deeper, something chronic, um, something longer lasting. So getting taken care of those, as soon as I notice them. It's not a weakness. It's a smart thing. So. Yeah. Wrestling yeah. has, has evolved so much. And of course the sport always changes, right? There's a lot of things, the same lot of things, but the way we train, the way we understand it is, I mean, even since I wrestled in college, I look back, I'm like, man, we did so many dumb things, wrestling through injuries and the way we trained. And um, so now as a coach, you know, I'm always trying to evolve and then hopefully our athletes really, you know, can progress because of that mindset. And that's something yes. I do. I do. I do mindset coaching and that's much bigger now than it was even a couple of years ago. Right. Like just you gotta be tough. Like you said, like, all right, you just gotta be tough. Uh, what are some of the things that you do to be very intentional about not only training your body, but to train your mind? Um, again, again, it's, ev it's everything, right? So I think, um, training my mind. So setting my mind, you know, first thing when I wake up, you know, what, what are the things that you're focusing on? You know, I, I don't, I don't like watch a lot of TV or a lot of movies. So I'm intentional on what goes, what goes in, you know what I mean? And I control what comes out. Um, so again, don't watch a lot of whole lot of TVs and movies. The books I read are, you know, on purpose They're, you know, I, I like to read a lot of like military and war, like books on that. And, you know, just, just a lot of like that kind of stuff. Um, um, I, I do like some visualization and some mindset ex exercises um, because I don't want to just go into practice like, oh, what's going on today? <laughs> you know, I am very focused and intentional. So I want to make sure I have a strong mindset going into practice. Um, and then also I'll have different focuses for a workout, right? Like what is today's intention? What am I working on today? It's not just like, oh, coach will have a plan. You know, it's like, I'm going to set my own plan. And then whatever coach has is, is um, icing on the cake. You know, of course, coach is going to have a plan, but I need to have my own plan too. Am I focusing on head position today? Am I focusing on moving my feet? Am I focusing on shot finishes? Um, what is my intention for this workout? So I think having a plan and is just being more prepared for your, for your workouts and in your outcome will be a little bit stronger with that as well. Excellent. Last thing sort of on the mindset portion. What do you, what do you do for fun? Because a lot of times, you know, as wrestlers, we're training so hard, you're thinking about these things and it, it becomes, becomes an obsession almost. Right. And I think almost anybody's good at something has that. So what's your break away from that? <laughs> I do love to relax, <laughs> but, uh, when, when, you know, when I've got a little bit more like downtime, like maybe the weekend or there's no tournament or something coming up uh, since I live in Colorado Springs, I like the mountains. So I love to hike. I like to hunt. Um, I grew up on the farm, so my family has horses. I love to go horseback riding, riding. Um, my family can competes in uh, barrel racing and, and mounted shooting. So I like that kind of stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. Yep. From what I said earlier, before we start recording, I'm from Oklahoma originally. I'm a, uh, a rodeo fan. So yeah, <laughs> you know, from cowboy country, but all right. Yes. For, for both of you, um, both of you are pioneers in what you're doing. Both of you have had to 
like, like anybody that's going to start a new venture, like there's going to be, there's going to be doubts. There's going to be fear. How do I jump into this? When you think about, you know, someone who's going to start the sport of wrestling, maybe a young lady. So my daughter, she's a freshman, really good volleyball player. It's her main sport. My wife coaches volleyball, but she says, dad, I'm wrestling next year. So she's going to come out as a sophomore next year, which is pretty cool. And also makes dad nervous. Um, so, you know, same time, I'm so proud, but what has allowed each of you to overcome that fear and say, you know what, let's, let's do it anyway, right? Fortune favors the bold. Like what made you jump? I'll, I'll start. I mean, it was my daughter. I mean, so the name of the company, Yes Athletics, is all about saying yes to scary things. So the fact that I would have never had the nerve at nine years old to walk into a room full of boys who, and I say this respectfully, they didn't necessarily want her there because it's their sport. That's their space, right? And they they were brought up think, being told not to hurt girls. And then here's this girl. And so then they ease up a little bit and then they get beat and then their boys, their buddies rib them. So it's kind of, sometimes it's a lose-lose for the, for the, for the guys. And I can appreciate that. The fact that she walked into that room, you know, you've got girls making fun of you for doing that sport. You've got the boys there. I mean, I just, she just really inspired me. So it's all about saying yes to scary things is what the name of the company is named after. And so, you know, I was ready to launch this company in April of 2020. That was kind of the timeline and we were locked down and we didn't, you know, you recall, I mean, we didn't know if we were going to have sports in the fall or you know, my, my daughter, my oldest daughter lost her senior track season. Like, so that's outside. So what's going to happen to wrestling? This is this high contact sport. So I finally just had to stop, you know, come June or July and say, wow, the premise of my company is about saying it's the scary things. And there's a lot of unknowns here, but we're just going to go for it. Yeah. Love that. I love that's what you named it. And I love that. That's what you just said. Forget it. We're just going. We're just doing it. <laughs> you got to jump. <laughs> all right how about you lauren yeah um i just like i said i when i started wrestling i i loved it you know it was hard it required a lot of me and uh, same thing deb saying i mean you get made fun of and stuff and i just i, I didn't let, allow those outside voices to affect me you know of course of course they bother you of course they hurt your feelings of course the things are hurtful that are being said but when you believe in yourself and your own abilities and you just, you know, stay on your own path and you're like, Hey, I love what doing. I'm what I'm doing. And I don't, I'm not gonna let anyone else tell me any different, you know? And, um, I just, I liked that. And so also my, my whole thing is believe in Louise, Lauren Louise, my last name's Louise. So believe in Louise. So believe in you, believe in yourself and, you know, um, those things that are required of you, it, you know, wrestling requires you to believe in yourself and to go after that, regardless of what others tell you, not everyone's going to see it for you. In fact, a lot of people are going to discourage you from doing that. And no one knows what's inside of your heart. You know, you could be watching a match and the kids down five, nothing. You're like, Oh man, it's over now or nine, nothing. And it's a 10 point tech and freestyle. And you're watching you're like, yep, it's over. And the kid comes back and wins it. You know, it's, it, it's having that belief in yourself and not everyone's going to see that for you. It's not, it's not always going to be obvious, but you know, so, yeah. Yeah. And you get, get me That's all, pumped. <laughs> get me all pumped up. I'm going to have to work out after this. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's what I love about sports though. I mean, so I, I grew up in the eighties and graduated high school in 89 and sports were just not a big thing for girls. Not at all. I mean, you know, yes, there was title nine, but you know, the cool kids wore a skirt. They were cheerleaders, dancers. So, um, but I probably could have been a great, I was fast too. I was great on the track. So um, I lost my train of thought. So later in life, I got this wild hair when I turned 45 that I was going to run a half marathon. Well, I was a sprinter. The most I ever ran was 400 meters. So the thought of running 13 miles and, you know, I'm sitting at lunch with a friend of mine and I'm telling her, I, I can't run distance. I'm a sprinter. I can't do this. And she's like, you need to get over yourself. So the fact that when I trained and you, in your mind, you're telling yourself you can't do these things. And that what was great about training for that is you realize you can do so much more than you ever thought you could. Your body is so capable. You just have to, it is, it's all about mindset, but sport and wrestling, especially really does that for you. Yeah. It's, there's never a point where you're comfortable in the sport of wrestling. If there is, you probably should, I guess, be done with wrestling, but you know, it's <laughs> one, of the, one of the beautiful things I love about all grappling sports, all hand-to-hand -hand combat. And I, this is all sports in general, but really those, 
there's never there's never a, a finality, right? So take someone like Kel Sanderson, who was 159-0 in college. And then, of course, we see what he's done now coaching, but wins an Olympic title, those type of things. That guy is still learning all the time. He's still trying to grow, so has that growth mindset. You know, there's no, like, it's, it's a white belt mentality. You're always got to try to learn, which I think applies to so many other areas in life. So let me, let me jump over to this for you all. What are some, if you can narrow them down, and this is a broad topic, but what are some of the principles of success that you have found in your journey, whether it is consistency, um, you know, just downright grittiness? What are a couple of the things that just, hey, when I do these things, I seem to click on all cylinders and, and to progress and move forward. Um, well, so I've been in sales as a recruiter, you get rejected every day. So that recreates this, you're, you're constantly exercising the muscle of mental toughness. I mean, you just can't take that personally. So that's one thing I think that starting another business was to my advantage. Um, but I also think, I also kind of jumping off of something Lauren said is, one of my bosses said, if you fail to plan, you can plan to fail. So you do have to, that before you go to bed, figure out what am I doing the next day? And what am I going to accomplish? I'm, I'm, and again, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time and I still have to go into meetings and go, what do I want to accomplish? What does success look like at the end of this meeting? So it's just a constant, constantly exercising that muscle. But I think the biggest thing is doing business with integrity. I mean, you realize people don't necessarily do business with you because, you know, they they do business with you because they know you do good business and you're going to be true to your word and you're honest and transparent. And I think putting that good karma out there comes back tenfold. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big believer in business and a lot of things in life that people buy you first. Right. So, mm -hmm. and, and I tell you what, it takes a, I've had some, I've done some stuff as an entrepreneur and um, it takes some boldness. It takes some, some bravery to just reach out and ask people, because like you said, you're, there's that chance of rejection there. And so that actually kind of builds those muscles. Like, Hey, I'm just going to go for it anyway. I'm just going to ask. I mean, what's right. going to say is no. Right. Yeah. So, all right, Lauren, how about you? Some, you know, some principles of success. Yeah, I, I've got a couple. So again, um, belief in yourself. Cause like I said, my, my whole thing is believe in the weave. So believing in yourself, but before that you have, you have to know where you're going, you know? So what, what goal, what are your goals? What's your plan? Where do you intend to go with this? You know, so creating a goal, um, you know, people say this all the time, posting it up and seeing it somewhere. I, I think that's huge. Like in, in saying it all the time, you know, um, this, for some, something as small that I do, um, you know, on my email, like people have their little, like your name and then, you know, your contact information and maybe the school that you work for, or what, whatever. Um, so mine, I'll have my name and then I make myself, instead of like having the little thing, I make myself write out, believe in the weave Olympic hopeful 2024, because I'm physically typing it out every single time. And so that just kind of reinforces what my goals are, who I am, what, what I'm chasing, you know? And so that's just kind of a little mindset thing that I like to do, but, um, believe in myself, definitely the planning, like not only am I going, um, planning into practices, but what, what does my meal plan look like? You know, what does my rest look like? When am I, when am I taking a break for this, this, and that, you know, when, when am I taking a nap, <laughs> you know, what, what time's my lift, you know, and, and kind of creating those plans. So definitely planning, um, belief in yourself, um, always learning. You mentioned the white belt mentality, you know, having an open mind to like, when I go and I coach clinics, like I can learn from a 10 year old kid. They're going to teach me. I'm going to learn something. I'm going to pick something up from this kid, you know, no matter what it is, maybe it's how to coach better. Maybe it's how to explain something better. Maybe I learn a new technique from them. You know, maybe I, anything you can learn from anyone, always constantly finding another way, a better way to do something. Your ways are not set in stone. When you're set in stone and you stop learning, you stop evolving. Um, so I think that's huge. And then also ego, taking your ego out of it, you know, as wrestlers, we get some big egos, you know, and it hurts when you lose, but can you learn from the loss? Can you let go of the ego and your pride enough to learn from your failures? Because those failures are valuable. If you let them, if you don't learn from those, you're, 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 you're not utilizing valuable information that you could be learning from and getting better. So, um, 
that. And then I think being vulnerable enough with yourself to be honest with yourself in the areas that you may need improvement in the areas where you need to ask help mm-hmm. and, and just, yeah, vulnerability and, and ego, I think are big too. Excellent. Excellent. Asking for help. And Deb, you mentioned that earlier, you know, Lauren, you just said it, asking for help. That's something I think a lot of people have difficulty doing. I know as, um, as a coach, for one thing, I, I try to constantly train, reading, very intentional about what I'm reading, what I'm watching. I have, and I'm blessed, I have great assistant coaches. I have some phenomenal assistant coaches. And, you know, uh, I'm not afraid. For one, if I put them in charge of something, I don't micromanage them, right? If I hired them on my staff, I trust them to do it, but also to go to them. And we discuss a lot of things, right? I'm, I'm not just making simple decisions, I will, but a lot of decisions I'm not just making, I'm going to them. But also people that I look up to, people that they're sort of my, my counsel or my board, you know, and if I feel like I don't fully understand something, I want to go to them and ask questions. How do you get to the point to where you can shrink your ego enough or, or set your ego aside so that you can go and ask for help? Because both of you mentioned that. I don't know. I, I guess it's just never been a problem with me. I'm a big believer in you become like the five people you surround yourself with. So my friends are all just phenomenal supporters of we support each other. I mean, it's not uncommon for me to get a text in the middle of the day and say, hey, just tell, telling you, I think you're awesome. I mean, just constantly pumping you up, but they're also really, really smart. So if it's a question about kids, I go to this friend. If it's a question about marketing, I go to this friend. If it's I know my limitations and I don't know everything. So I think it's important to surround yourself with really smart people that are experts in their field. And maybe they come to me for resume advice or (laughs) starting a business advice or something. So. Yeah. Excellent. Lauren. It wasn't that easy for me. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. I, I remember going to tournaments, specifically this one tournament in Ukraine, and I went to an out to a barbecue and I was like, no way did I just get beat by this, I don't know, whatever country girl, like, you know, this first year wrestler, you know, I don't know. She wasn't a first year wrestler, but I was like, how I should have won this tournament. I, you know, ah, I trained so hard. I'm so tough. Ah, you know? And I was like, how, how, how am I losing? I'm too, I'm too good for this. And then I had to admit my, to myself, no, you're not. Because if you were, you wouldn't be in this position. So what could I have done better? I had to take myself to that bottom, that low, like, if you want to improve, you have to do something different because what you're doing is not working. So I had to kind of reevaluate and pull back and be like, okay, what can I take away from this? How do I get better? Something has to change or you're not going to get any better. And so I, I, it did have to come to that level of humility and like letting go of ego. And that's, that's what it was for me. So, and it was at a tournament. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And again, lessons, lessons learned, right? So took losses and lessons learned. And yeah, I know I've often thought like, I don't want to be the ceiling on my organization. I don't want to be the ceiling on that. I know my limitations and I know I can only get so far. So if you go out and you ask for help and you find people that are experts in their field, and it is amazing how many people that are experts in their field will help if you just ask. Yes. Yeah. A lot yeah. Of people can ask and you go ask and they help and you're like, geez, I didn't expect them to say yes on this, you know, comes kind of, mm-hmm. kind of like a little sales thing. Okay. And, and sometimes the things that those people notice that you're not recognizing yourself. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. that feels good when somebody says, can I get your advice on something? So I know if that makes me feel good, that would probably make somebody else feel good. Like, what is yeah. your advice on this topic? Yeah. Yeah. And that's important, right? When we're pretty limited on what we see. I know one of my college coaches said, I wish every one of my wrestlers could go coach for a year and then come back and wrestle. They'd be better at wrestling. And whenever you're doing anything, you kind of get like, I almost want to say repetitive or kind of stuck in the box, right? Mm-hmm. The same things over and over. So you need an outside perspective, which is why yeah. I mean, Coach P's perspective. You need an outside perspective to be able to see that and then to be able to advance. And when you have these people in your life, people you ask for help, they see a different perspective of you. And it might just be one little minute thing, you know, one little thing, but it can be a major difference. Okay, I don't want uh, I don't want you guys to 
to be modest with this, I guess is how I want to word it. All right. I believe everybody has, I believe God's given everybody gifts and abilities. And, you know, it's part of our responsibility to try to get really good at those things. But everyone has some sort of a genius, right? You got people that are great at math and you get people that can walk over and take your engine apart and put it back together. I mean, we have different geniuses. What are your geniuses? What's something that you it kind of comes natural to you, easy to you? Doesn't mean you don't work hard on it, but it's a genius for you. Wow, that's a tough one. <laughs> I, I mean, in fact, I have the gift of gab. I'm a I'm the true extrovert. I will talk to strangers in the the aisles at the grocery store, you know, and compliment them. <laughs> and um, but having said that, I just hired a coach for myself for my business to elevate me to the next level with communication. So while I'm great at small talk, I need to work on more mindful communication. Yeah, communication is, it is one of the most valuable. And I mean, just for relationships, everyday interactions, right? Mm -hmm. Whenever you are in any sort of public eye, being able to communicate with people, but it's just as important when you're talking to somebody one-on-one. -on -one. So if you are wanting to grow your business and you're talking with someone, communication is huge. Uh, it's something I it's something I often study. I do a lot of public speaking, so it's something I often study as well. But that's a yeah. great gift to have. You know, it's exceptional. So, all right, Lauren, what do you what do you consider to be a genius? Uh, I guess I I guess I would go with two. Um, so one, um, kind of close to what you guys are talking about, communication. Um, but I would say relationships. Like relationships mean a mean a lot to me. Um, I you know I think everyone, we all need relationships. We all need a community. We all need support, you know, and, and I like to be that for other people as well. Um, I, I like supporting what supports me. I like helping people. Um, and I, I like giving back. And so, um, I, I think that's come very, very easy to me is, um, continuing, uh, relationships and growing relationships with people. And, and I enjoy that. Um, so that one, and then I just, I like to work hard. Like, so I like anything that's tough, anything that's hard, anything that's gritty actually comes, not that it comes easy, easy to me, but it does in the sense that I enjoyed it doing it. Hence why I like to wrestle, you know, I love doing the incline. I like doing the incline with a sandbag, you know, like that, like anything that's hard. I love the air dine, you know, um, I grew up on a, on a horse farm. So we, you know, we'd make hay in the summer and like being up in the hay loft, you know, wearing long sleeves and sweating in 90 degrees or 105 degrees. I like that stuff. So anything that's difficult is in some way easy because I enjoy it. Yeah. And those are two relationships or everything. You know, as a coach, it's the number one thing I ask my coaching staff that we build relationships with their athletes. It's what builds culture, right? And I know yeah. that I have coaches right now that I would still run through the wall for. And then hard work applies to everything. And I've never met a successful person. I believe in efficiency. I believe in being as effective as you can, always finding the best way. But it comes with hard work. That's all there is to it. So to be able to embrace that is really a gift. And uh, anybody listening, just go and Google Lauren's name and you'll see that she's all rocked out. So she's that <laughs> pure, pure muscle. You can tell she puts in work. So which is good, which is awesome. All right. Thanks. So for you as a for you as an athlete, Lauren, what um, what does it mean for you? Because a lot of people maybe don't think. And so we see pro athletes, NFL, NBA, things like that. And we know they get paid a lot. Whenever you are one of our Olympic level wrestlers, you know, it's not like you're getting paid these big contracts. It's really, really difficult to do what you do and then to be able to make a substantial living. Now, I will say these days are better than it was 10 years ago because of sponsorship, you know, sponsorships and things like that. But what does it mean for you to be able to have this sponsorship with Yes Athletics? Oh my gosh. It's, it's huge, but you know, not only like monetarily, like what, but what we were talking about in regards to the relationship, you know, and I support, I, I love that it's created by women for women. You know, I, I love what she's, her, her background with the company, you know, I love say yes to the scary thing. You say yes to the difficulty. I'm like, yeah, that is, that is me a hundred percent. Like, I love that. You know, I, I love that she has a heart for supporting females and women's wrestling and growing the sport and, you know, supporting that and her daughter wrestle, you know, so I, I love the connection there, you know, so it's not just like, Oh, what can they do for me? You you know, I, I like supporting companies that want to help people too, and that are looking to grow the sport. Um, so I, I love that, that aspect of, of our relationship. 
Um, but then, yeah, I mean, of course, like it, it's helpful. The, the support is of course helpful so that I can continue training and continue do what I, doing what I'm doing. It's not easy. And I had to make the decision, you know, actually after, you know, those two years of being a grad assistant, which by the way, only paid the grad bill, <laughs> you know, it's not like it's a huge stipend either. You know, I wasn't making money off of that, but I had to make this decision. Okay. Am, am I going to work for for money. And cause I could go and, you know, I've got, I've got four degrees, you know, it was a triple undergrad major and I have my master's degree. So I, I could go and work. I have a biology degree. I could go pre-med, whatever. Um, do I want to go and do that? Or do I want to chase my past passion? You know, do I want to chase after this dream that I got when I was six years old of becoming an Olympic champion and a world champion, you know, am I going to chase that? Cause I only have a short amount of time to do that and I can make money the rest of my life you know, but do I want to go and chase this goal? And is that going to eat me alive if I don't do that now? And I don't ever have that regret. So mm. I'll figure out how to make money when it's time to make money. If I, as long as I can live to eat and, you know, I got food and a warm bed to lay in at night, I'm good. So I'm going to keep chasing this passion until, until I get the goal. That's awesome. You know, whenever, whenever you see someone chase their passion, it inspires you to do the same. And behind the scenes, it takes a, you know, we always say like it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to be able to help people reach their goals and to go after things they really want, no matter what it is, you know? So like we mentioned earlier, you have to have help. It's, it doesn't come alone. And if you are an island, you probably, you probably won't be able to succeed for very long, you know? Right. So it's awesome. And I could also hear the passion in your voice as you were talking about yes, athletics and, you know, you and Debbie relationship. Um, the belief that you have in her company, you can't fake passion. I can hear the passion in your voice. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. you know, so Deb, what? let's just say we're kind of looking over the next couple of years, forecasting the future a little bit. Where do you want to see Yes Athletics? On retail shelves. <laughs> um, I want to be, eventually I want to be a household name. I mean, you know, hey, you think girls wrestling, you think Yes Athletics. Mm -hmm. I want to get to that point. Um, I want to be on retail shelves. Right now we're e-commerce. Um, we're in discussions with um, a company right now. They do destination retail. So they're building retail around these big facilities that do multiple sports. Um, so hopefully we'll be in those facilities by the fall. Um, you know, eventually, you know, yeah, I mean, I'd like to have an end game and my retirement. So yeah, if some big, bigger shoe company wants to come in and um, take over. I mean, that's going to be a tough decision, right? Because it's kind of your baby. But um, yeah, I mean, there's a there's an end game inside, of course. Yeah, that's it's a good goal, and I'll be excited whenever uh, whenever I get to walk into Dick's, you know, Sporting Goods or Academy or one of those and see yes, athletic shoes up on the shelf, you know, so the boys can go and get their shoes and the girls can walk over. No, these are ours right here. This is uh, right. Cause they're not there right now. You walk in and it's still the same shoes. So still the same exact two, two pairs of black and white shoes. So yep. Yep. <laughs> same stuff. <laughs> yep. All right. I'm going to always end with this and you guys can expound upon it as much as you want. You can pick one or you can, you can do all three. Okay. I want you to tell me about a hero highlight or hardship in your life? Hero, highlight, or hardship? Hmm. Lauren, you want to go first? Yeah. This one? You go first. Oh, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to defer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Hero, hardship. Okay. Yeah. I'll, all right. Hardship. Let's go with that one. <laughs> I told you I like the hard stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, hardship. Let's go with that. Um, so it was right after I graduated college and I'm trying to make an, a name for myself, believe in Louis, right? I'm, I'm trying to like make it on the big seat. I only proved everyone else like, Hey, I'm chasing this thing. Like I'm out of college now. So this is like kind of make it or break it for a lot of people. They only give themselves a couple years on the senior level. And if they're successful, they keep going. And if they're not successful, that's it. And they go into their career. So I'm like, all right, just graduate college. It's the the it's now known as the Bill Farrell, but then it was the NYC tournament in New York City. 
And um, I'm like, all right, this is my time to shine. Like first huge international competition, you know, all the, all the teams are there, you know, Russia, Ukraine, China, Japan, like they're all there. They're all represented, you know, and I go and compete. And again, just like Ukraine, I go to and barbecue, but this was before that. So I go to and barbecue. And it's the first time I ever went to and out of a tournament. First time I ever went to and out of a tournament, like high school and everything. And I was like, what just happened? And you know, it's embarrassing, it's hurtful. And not only that, like, I didn't exactly do a very good job of proving to myself that I was going to be able to make it on the senior level. And um, so I, I, I called my dad. And um, I remember specifically being at the airport on the ride home, and I'm, I'm all down about myself, I'm upset, I'm like, kind of self reflecting, like, what am I doing, you know, and, you know, I was kind of looking for some like, for, you know, I called my dad, because I wanted to I wanted to feel him like put his arm around me and be like, everything's going to be okay. I love you. You know, all that good stuff, the warm gooey stuff you want when you call your parents, you know, and uh, everything's going to be okay. You're doing great. You're doing all the right things. And I call them and he tells me, Lauren, how, how long are you going to keep doing this wrestling thing? And I was like, dagger through the heart, right? Like my own dad doesn't believe that I can do this. My own dad doesn't think that I can be successful on the senior level. My own dad doesn't think I can get the goal like he he doesn't think I can do it and uh I hung up the phone on him and I you know I, I was upset and I you know start crying and I'm super and then it, it took me about two minutes to realize it doesn't matter what he thinks what he thinks doesn't matter it only matters what I think and I believe in myself and I know I can find the way I know I can figure out and that's kind of where believe in Louise came from you know what everyone else thinks about you it doesn't matter you're going to have coaches. You're going to have teammates. You're going to have your own parents that don't believe in you. And that's okay. It only matters that you believe in you. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the whole believe in the weave. And it really fits with yes, athletics. It, you know, we're sending the same message. There's believe in yourself because other people aren't going to see it for you. And what they say doesn't matter. So. Absolutely. It's actually one yeah. of the mindset lessons that we, uh, one of the mindset lessons that we teach, you know, other people's opinions, don't matter, you know, you got to have that self belief. But do you have a believe in, um, believe in Louis t shirt? I'm sure you probably do, but I do. Yeah, okay. I, I have one. I should have worn it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> All right, I got to get one because every time you said that, I'm like, t shirt, t shirt, like I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. I do. I do have a believe in Louis t shirt and, uh, you know, possibly stickers coming this summer. <laughs> Ooh, right. Actually, yeah. It. yeah. Awesome. Very cool. All right, Deb, how about you? Well, after that, I'll just say Lauren's my hero. <laughs> I just think I love her messages that she gives, but um, I guess I'll just talk about faith for a moment. Um, I, I have a really strong faith. I mean, I, I was the kid in the pew every Sunday, and um, but you don't really think about that until you get to tough times, which is, you know, whether it was the time I had to change a job. And I mean, that took a, that amazingly took a lot of faith to, to leave that job and do something different. Um, but my husband passed away in 2010. So I had a eight-year-old, a three-year-old and a four-month-old. <laughs> so getting through, like, I look back at pictures now, I'm like, how did I make it through that? But it all has to do with faith and still focusing on all the blessings that you have. And that again, you can do tough things, you know, you can make it through that. Um, and through that, I also developed a passion for helping people because that just makes you feel good. I mean, when you're, you're in a funk and you're down in the dumps, I mean, going and helping people and realizing all, all the blessings that you have, um, that's just, that's such a plus. So um, I would say that just, you know, my hardship, I'm not scared of hardships now. And I guess maybe that's why jumping into an entrepreneurial company during a global pandemic didn't scare me because I'm like, I have such a strong faith. I know God has a plan for me. And if I fail at this, then he's going to open a door somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. That is uh, of course an incredible hardship right there, but to be able to come through that and it's not like hard things ever, ever get easy. Right but to not be afraid of them. It's not be afraid to take a chance because it might be hard down the road. That is a, uh, I think maybe, maybe some is natural, but I think it's a lot of that is sort of a built skill that happens over time as we endure life, right? As we endure those things that come toward us. And then 
being able to lean on our faith and know that God's got you back in the process, which is, which is beautiful. So awesome. All right. Well, I want to tell both of you, you know, thank you so much for being on. It's a blessing. Um, I hope that not only you know, a lot of women's coaches and young ladies listen to this, but a lot of people in the wrestling world and business world listen to this as well. It's a valuable message. You both are making a great impact in what you're doing. And of course, it's making a great impact in wrestling, but it's making a great impact in people's lives as well. Um, I, I'm biased, of course, being a wrestler, but there are so many life lessons that we can learn from this and it, it can positively impact so many lives. So this is a continuation of that, what you're both doing. So thank you so much for being on. Thank, thank you. For the you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, you bet. So, and I will put uh, links to your socials on there. I'll put links to Yes Athletics so people can click on there. They can see more about you, Lauren. They can follow you guys on social media and then they can go out and see, you know, hey, here's that, here's these wrestling shoes and here are the things I can get from Yes Athletics and I can support this company that's making a difference and is providing literally providing opportunities for women and for girls in the great sport of wrestling. So I'll make sure I put those things in there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, you bet. All right, everybody. This has been another episode of Coach P's Perspective. May God bless you, smile upon you, give you peace. Till next time we're out.